Okay, here's the capacitor shield finder I came up with to help locate the shield side of these Mallory 150 caps that we've been using. So we don't have to use the oscilloscope and that whole procedure. So hopefully this will help out in production and make things simpler. Uh, it's not perfect though, so I want to go over how to get the best use out of it and some problems you might run into. All right, first of all, how to use it. Okay, this whole assembly up here is just kind of a set of jaws to clamp the capacitor in place, place it in there and clamp it right in place uh, so it can be tested. So and it's, as, it's as easy as it looks. You rotate this thing, place the capacitor in there, drop the jaws, and what's supposed to happen is there are these two LEDs the one that lights up the brightest is the shield side. So you drop the jaws, LED comes on, mark that side, done, pull it out. Um, now before you get started you're going to have to adjust this sensitivity control to kind of zero in the operation for the particular situation in your room because what this does is it helps nullify any noise in the room from particularly fluorescent lights are really bad so and can um, can screw up the reading and this helps nullify that noise so here's what you do you start all the way down you bring the knob up until both lights come on then you turn it back until they both just turn off and you're done you shouldn't have to mess with it again so let me do a few test runs here and I'll I'll show you uh, how it works and what problems you might run into. Now, small capacitors like this 0022 generally work really well. You don't have to screw around. Pretty much drop it in and it indicates. That's the shield side. I can prove that by flipping it around. and there's the shield side. See that? Um, works pretty well with those small values. Now for larger capacitors you might run into some trouble. Um, point 0.1 and above have much thicker leads than the thinner ones and um, also there are some bizarre properties to the wrapping that can in some cases give you inconsistent results. So here's what you'll have to do. All right, so you got a point one or above, you know, put it in there. And uh, another thing I should mention is, let me get this out of the way. Okay, and see that screw head there? That's actually the antenna. And what that wants to do is, wait a minute, there. You want that antenna to touch the body of the capacitor dead center, all right? So you don't want it off to be uh, like this or like this. You want it dead center. So let me, uh, let me drop it in dead center. So another thing, like I said, you want it to touch the body. So if the leads are bent and it's sticking up like this, it's not going to give you a good reading. So just push it down, all right? And you'll see brighter but look that one's on a little bit don't let that throw you just go with the brightest one and that's the shield side and I can prove that by flipping it around again okay see that this one's definitely brighter but this one's on a little bit so don't don't let that throw you it's just go with the brightest one now another problem you might have is this. Bigger capacitors like this with even thicker leads uh, can cause trouble because the jaws aren't strong enough to clamp, to deform the lead and make it clamp in there properly. So sometimes you'll get a false reading. So what you have to do is any kind of capacitor with a really thick lead, even the point ones, you might do this. Put it in there, centered, right? But do this push these jaws down. Just push down like that. Just bang, like that. 
And the reason you have to do that is these springs are just not strong enough to clamp down properly on those leads. And I could I probably should have used a stronger string here, stronger spring here, but that's all I had in my junk box. That's what you get for free. So, you know, you'll get as with the point one, you'll see one is brighter than the other, but both are on. So go with the brighter one. So that's all you have to remember. Um, so there are the, the tips I have for getting the best results here. Are number one, make sure the capacitor is centered on that little antenna screw under there. Number two, make sure the capacitor is sitting down, touching the antenna screw. And number three, in some cases you might need to press down like that to make it fit in there well. See that? You can see that right here. As I push down, I'm getting a different result. So hopefully this will help, um, you know, simplify the process, make it a little, a little less uh, of a problem. And um, if you have any questions,